Well guys, that title, it's not clickbait. Uh, the Hawk Project, it's no more. Um, but it's not exactly what you think. The truck's not going anywhere. Um, but in light of some recent events uh, that I've seen on YouTube, um, it's not gonna be the Hawk Project anymore. And let me, let me explain why. So, one of the channels I follow, and you guys are probably well aware of it, is Bias for Build. And if you don't know what happened to him recently, so he was building a 2015 Mustang, I believe, and he was doing it in the same form and name of uh, the car from Gone in 60 Seconds, which is referred to as Eleanor. Well, I guess from my understanding of his video that he put out and whatnot is that he got um, like a cease and desist order or, or was sued, whatever. Long story short, um, they took his car and so he no longer has it because it violated, because Eleanor, I guess, is a character. It's a trademarked and registered character and name. So they, were, they took his car and there was a bunch of legal stuff, whatever. So that got me thinking about the Hawk Project. Granted, this does not mimic any other um, character, but the name, the Hawk, um, I'm assuming is trademarked somewhere, being that it is a um, comic book character, movie character. So that got me thinking, um, granted I'm not as big as, nor near as big as um, B is for Build, but that got me concerned um, now that my videos are monetized, if you guys have noticed, um, I did decide to monetize. All that um, ad revenue will be going back into um, the 66, into the Falcon, um, into the custom line. So all of that ad revenue will be going back into these projects um, to help the channel grow, help these projects uh, become bigger and, and better. But that got me thinking that you know what, at some point down the road, I don't want it to ever become an issue that this is called the Hawk. And so I'm gonna change the name of it. Um, I don't have a name. I'm just gonna start referring to it as the 66 again. Um, if you guys have a name suggestion, drop it down below. I am gonna be going back through and retitling all the videos um, and getting rid of you know stuff that says the Hawk Project. Um, you know, if you follow me on Instagram, I'm going to get rid of that, all the Hulk project stuff on there. I'm keeping the pictures all, all up. I don't know what I'm going to do about like some of the thumbnails that say the Hulk project. We'll see. I have to edit them or change them, but I'm going to try and get rid of as much of that stuff as I can just to, um, reduce the risk of any legal repercussions that may or may not come farther on down the road. So I'm just going to nip that in the butt. Uh, ahead of time so it's unfortunate but those are kind of the times we live in so um what else i have worked on the truck a little bit this month it's been almost a month actually i think it's been over a month since i put up the video of getting the falcon running and driving and uh, guys i honestly haven't got a chance to do much on the truck i've done some stuff to the truck i'll show you that here in a minute it's just been a crazy month. Uh, I think it was a few days after I put that video up of the Falcon. We got a tremendous downpour here. And I got home from work. And my basement was flooded. Uh, some pump had gone out. And so I had like an inch of water in my basement. And we had just gone through and like organized a bunch of stuff. And, and got it all straightened up. So basement got flooded. So I was dealing with that. Getting the basement cleaned up repaired you know all the all the stuff that goes on with that and then um what else ended up happening uh one of our dogs we had surgery on one of our dogs so that was like two weeks worth of just making sure he didn't go after his stitches and and just kind of keeping an eye on him um we had to redo the deck on the back of the house because it was starting to rot and um get holes and fall through and then my uh my son he just turned actually he turns four it's wednesday he technically turns four tomorrow um, so probably when you're watching this video will be his birthday. Um, so he turns four, but this past weekend we had a birthday for him. So, you know, a bunch of just getting stuff around for that, um, first birthday party. So I really haven't had a whole lot of an opportunity to, uh, work on the truck. Um, I did get some stuff done, so I'll go ahead and show you that stuff now.
All right, guys, so inside, it's still a mess, but you know, it doesn't look like I've done much. I swear I have. Uh, the computer is actually mounted, uh, bolted. It was just kind of temporarily stuck in place before. So computer's bolted in. Uh, what else did I do? I'm trying to think. Oh, I made a bracket. So this fuse box is securely mounted. I've got this, um, one of those dash pieces that I fabricated just temporarily sitting there. So I get a distance on that fuse panel. It's, you know, finger width just up, uh, up above that. And then one of the things that I've been trying to work on and that's the most time consuming is making all the, you know, Kronvik stuff fit in here and look right. So like the cigarette lighter, the old cigarette lighter, I took one of the six or one of the Crown Vic ones, the factory one. It's plugged in back here. So this actually is a functional, not a cigarette lighter, but like a auxiliary, like a 12 volt source. And I was able just to plug the old um, cigarette lighter in. And then one of the things I'm kind of most proud of is I've moved the air compressor switch. It used to be right here. So the air compressor switch is now here. Uh, where the wipers used to be and I just use the old trim bezel so you won't even really really be able to tell and then one of the other trick things I did actually guys let me just play you a video from when I was working on all this stuff and it'll better explain what I did with the ignition switch so this is going to be from like a month ago uh, back when I was working on it I was going to make a video out of it but um, just given the length of time since then whatever um, I'll just play that clip so you guys can see what I did with the ignition switch and uh, and just get a little better idea. All right, guys, so can you see an ignition switch anywhere? Nothing in the original, well, no, that's not the original hole. That's the original hole. That's my air compressor now, though. But the uh, ignition switch is kind of hidden. I utilized an old switch. If you turn it all the way, it'll crank. I'm not going to start it though, but I'll just bump the starter. And then for security, I haven't mounted it yet, but I'm going to figure out a way because obviously I still need the key with the PATS system. I'm going to mount that up under there, figure out a way to secure the key and make it to where I can put the key in and out. So Yes, the ignition switch can be turned by anybody, but without the key, because if I slip this out of here, the key's sitting right there. Still get power, but no crank. And I'll pull this apart so you can see how I, uh, how I did this. All right guys, as you can see, the switch, it's held in place with these two screws. I would really like to make those a little bit more um, hidden, but it's kind of what I had to deal with. So this is the ignition switch right here. So I can get this out unhanded. Undo the plug. Try my, uh, my right hand, my intelligent hand. There we go. And then pop these screws out. I didn't have any nuts on them because I was still working on uh, final fitment and everything. Oh, come on. Okay, pull that screw out. Switch will come off the back. So I had to um, do a couple of things. So this piece of plastic you're seeing that starts right here and goes to here. That's added. That's actually a piece of um, plastic from a shop vac hose. You can see there's the switch, the gray that you're seeing in there is the switch. And then the center is the black circle with that little um, kind of a notch. That's what you have to twist. I had to add this bracket because this is the only one that originally holds it. And it, when I would tighten it, it was kind of canting to the side. So added a little bracket here, that's where the bolt goes. And then 
to actually actuate that. Maybe you'll see it in here. Um, here, let me actually just pull it out. It's a little crude looking. I'm gonna clean it up some more. But what we're seeing is this is the original knob and shaft from I believe it was the windshield wiper switch. And then I had to add a little piece of metal on the end. That little piece of metal is what splines into the shaft there, or into the um, switch. So that's what turns it. Uh, this knob will come off. It's got a little snap ring or whatever. And the trim ring and all that is kind of some various pieces of different switches off the dash. So that's gonna be kind of my hidden uh, ignition switch. So as you saw, got the working ignition switch. Oh, well, it's not gonna crank right now because I got a bunch of stuff disconnected, but yep, still uh, still does its thing. Because this has uh, the chip in the key, I have to, I have to use the key um, and I have to use the, where is it at? Um, I don't even know where it is. But there's the, the little ring that goes around it to, that reads the chip and the key. Um, so I need to utilize that. So figuring out a way to kind of utilize the key with that ring, um, but yet still kind of keep it hidden. And I'm thinking I'm trying to actually even incorporate that there and it'll just be solid mounted and then I can, well, the key's stuck. And then I can just insert the key um, when I need to. And so it'll be secure because without the key, obviously the key is not, it's not recognizing the key right now. So it, it won't start. So yes, someone might be able to turn the ignition on, but it's not gonna start. So that'll be my kind of anti-theft uh, mechanism. So gotta figure out how to get that mounted, but um, I did a few other things, rerouted some more wiring, deleted some more wiring, and uh, I pulled out, I got the Crown Vic wiper motor here. So I was kind of toying around with that. So as you can see, I've made a little bit of progress here and there. Um, but like I was saying in the last video, it's a lot of just that little time consuming and tedious and just monotonous stuff. There's no real easy, simple fix for it, uh, especially when you're combining something from the 60s and something from, you know, 2011. So those are the problems that you run into and it's part of working on cars. But guys, as I was saying earlier, um, gonna change the name of the project. Uh, not really gonna affect anything else other than, um, you know, I don't know what to call it other than the 66 now. So if you guys do have suggestions, drop it down below. Um, and, uh, you know, drop any questions you have down below. I thank you guys for all your support. Um, it's just uh, it's been cool to watch the channel grow. Uh, last I checked, we were over 1,300 subscribers, which is awesome. Um, I'm, I'm super thrilled about that. So guys, you know, keep doing what you're doing. And, uh, yeah, be on the lookout for more content coming, hopefully quicker than it has been. Uh, now that things seem to be settling down once again. <laughs> but who knows? Who knows what's coming down the pipe? But guys, as always, um, I do appreciate you watching. You guys really do help the uh, channel grow. I appreciate the support. And uh, if you haven't yet, um, you know, subscribe. Hit, those, uh, hit that notification bell so you guys don't miss out. And uh, until next time, guys, get out in your garage, work on your stuff, stay safe.